Okay, so uh, today we have Margarita Monet of Edge of Paradise. Uh, so welcome, Margarita. Uh, we want to know, um, tell us a bit about yourself, please. Well, um, I was born in Armenia. And when I was three, my family moved to Moscow, Russia. And uh, since I was like three and four, my mom, she taught English at an arts academy. So she brought me with her to uh. her job. So while she was working, I was taking all kinds of classes like theater, dance, music. So I think from a very early age, it was like engraved in me. So I just continued, you know, um, I played piano, classical piano was pretty much my whole life. And uh, when my family, we moved to Houston, Texas, I was 11 years old and it was a big change for me. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I continued playing piano and then I went to performing arts high school and did musical theater. Never in my entire life I would think I would have a metal band or, you know, <laughs> do anything like this. Uh, but um, I, so after that, I went to college in New York and I studied theater and music. And then something made me move to LA. I still don't really know what made me do that. But uh, moving to LA, I joined like this dance singing group. And then a producer asked me to record a, or make a song with him. And then it turned out to be more of a rock song. So we were trying to find a guitar player for it. And we found Dave and that's how Dave and I met. And we decided to start our own band. <laughs> so in a nutshell well do you think that the fact that metal music there because you do call yourself an actress as well I, I read your bio do you think that the theatrics part of metal music is something that has attracted you uh, yeah I think that was an old bio <laughs> oh really <laughs> I mean uh, yes definitely I think uh, I always had a fascination of playing or like exploring different sides of people even like of myself like playing different characters i guess so for me writing songs is to kind of taking a reality to a new okay oh you know so that was kind of my expression through music through writing songs and i love this genre of you know rock and metal just because i feel like it's very expressive and i can you know, if, be expressive with, you know, through music and, uh, you know, playing piano was such a huge part of my life. And, you know, I play keyboards on the songs and writing music on the piano. I feel like I still do. I still have that side of myself, you know, the musician. Okay. Right. <laughs> so that's, I think that's why it really drew me to make my own band just because I didn't want to leave music behind. Very cool. So I'll go with the next question. Um, I'm sure our viewers would love to know who are some of your influences, maybe your favorite bands, uh, bands you listen to? Yeah, I love, I have such a broad genre. Uh, genre. I mean, I, I still like classical music. I love Nine Inch Nails and Ramstein. Yeah. Uh, I was a huge, I mean, I'm still, I'm a, but like when we started the band, I listen to Dio pretty much nonstop. And right. I, yeah. I we like Dio. We're big fans of Dio. <laughs> yeah, I love Dio. And uh, I mean, you know, I like like Black Sabbath. Um, and like, I like Within Temptation. Like, I really like their new album, like the more kind of modern sound they have going now. I really like that electro rock element to music. I think it's interesting to explore that that realm as well. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I like I like Thirty Seconds to Mars. I like Ray Charles. I like so many things. That's cool. That's cool. Um, and you guys are now with an Italian label in Frontiers. Uh, how did that come about? And I know Blue Oyster Cult is a major band on that label. Maybe name some of your favorite uh, label mates or people you listen to on, on uh, Frontiers? Yeah, they have, you know, I think uh, when we joined the label, they had a lot of bands from the 80s still. Okay. And uh, 
like it was a weird like for us when we made the last album universe you know we, we like put everything into it and we wanted to find a label partner and um we like we were finishing the songs and then we had a japanese tour coming up so frontiers came about and uh, like right away we kind of clicked and they got our music and they were really supportive and they offered us a good deal so you know we went with them and then we went to japan and then after we signed with frontiers they started kind of revamping the label a little bit they started signing a lot of like newer modern bands that are not you know that have um kind of more of a spe spectrum of sound right. uh, so that was kind of cool for us and then we, we met, met with the a r guy nick teeter and then he said you know that was kind of the plan for the label to start like, modernizing and expanding it so mm -hmm. you know it, it was cool for us because we weren't like the only <laughs> you know band that kind of didn't sort of fit in <laughs> right right more but i mean they have a lot of really good bands on there like seven spires um actually temple balls recently signed with them and we were on tour with them with sonata arctica in europe and then i i mean they have obviously like um white snake and <laughs> yeah then <laughs> the young i saw <laughs> from the x sticks yeah yeah, yeah. I want to tell you, because um, I read somewhere, and this took me really back out, that's why I want to tell you the story. Uh, your guitarist and co-founder of the band, Dave uh, Bates, correct? Um, he used to play with Robin McCauley. Yeah, Robin is actually on the label now, too. Oh, really? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, when I was like, this is going back 30 years, I was working somewhere, and somebody handed me the McCauley Schenker Group cassette, the, the one oh, called... Uh, yeah perfect timing and it was a cassette I used to listen to all the time and then when I came across that name I just had like a big flashback and I'm now I was on Spotify yesterday looking for the album which it wasn't there so they're probably because of uh, copyright licensing licensing yeah. oh yeah yeah probably they're probably not on there you know but I was like I go wow this guy's played with Robin McCauley you know and then I saw that you sort of like replaced Robin McCauley and became a new project correct well, um, it was uh, interesting how it happened because Robin kind of left music for a while and Dave, he wanted, like, this is before he met me, he wanted to kind of create a super group, you know, and uh, he, he was very driven, you know, he's a guitar player and he's an amazing guitarist, so he was writing music really driven by guitar and then when he wanted to create it, like, he approached Robin and Robin was like well I don't really want to do music anymore and then uh, they kind of got you know Robin convinced him to write music with him so they started this project called Bleed and then they had Tony Franklin on bass and Greg oh, nice. drums, and they recorded all, all these songs and then you know they they did like a they put out like a physical release and uh, they did quite a few shows so they had the, you know had it going for a while and then it was a time when survivor split and they had two survivors going on like one with a guitar player one with a singer so robin got asked by survivor to sing or you know go on tour with them and then so everybody kind of went on tour with like <laughs> big acts and you know dave uh, he wanted to create something that you know would take the all the dedication so you know that kind of went the separate ways and then he started to realize that he wanted to write like more well it's probably not till he met me but anyway so he met me around the time where bleed that was the name of the group split up and um you know we kind of were on the same page as um you know musically we kind of you know we worked really well together and uh, we wanted to create something that we would dedicate our like you know 100% to it and take it all the way so we started edge of paradise and then we released mask which was the first album but all those songs were written by robin and dave so yeah. that's why it sounds so different cuz you know it kind of gave me a chance to le learn how to sing <laughs> this genre maybe also, but right now we're trying to like make that CD go away because <laughs> it doesn't sound anything like us and people keep like finding it somewhere. Um, but you know, that's how we started it. And um, 
I mean, in a way, it was for me uh, like filling in the shoes of Robin, but in another way, it was completely different project because we had like this new thing and we wanted to create songs, not just have music that was like focused on a particular instrument. I mean, at the beginning, you know, it's always hard to kind of figure out what you want to sound yeah. like with a lot of like now we listen back like what were we, what were we thinking <laughs> but you know evolved into what we are and all the years kind of shape you so it's been how many years now the band almost 10. wow okay yeah I mean, in 2011 so to 2021 will be 10 years wow congratulations a lot of bands don't last that long yeah <laughs> And the tour, because that's how I found out that you guys were coming to town. Um, I saw that you were supposed to come to the Corona Theater here in Montreal. Excellent venue, by the way. That was the last show I saw there. Yeah. I saw a band from Atlanta called uh, Blackberry Smoke. Very uh, Southern rock. <laughs> and uh, so I said, this is my favorite venue from now. And then I saw you guys are coming there. I go, it's perfect. I still see the dates are still there. Are those dates legit or they might change? I think they're going to change. I think the, because the dates were created by the by the promoters. So I think they're just looking when it's safe to have a show. Because I think now you can have like 250 capacity. But anything above that, I think they're still banned. I don't know how it is in Canada, but like over here, things are so weird still. Well, so, they had closed the top level for the show. So it was only the bottom level. Uh, of the theater so maybe that's the reason they were doing it just for like safety measures you know yeah so i don't it looks like a lot of tours are rescheduling for 2021 just to be safe so i imagine it's going to be a new date in next year it's oh. just like the hard thing is when you have like a because it, it was 30 dates the tour so some states, they have different regulations. So it would be pretty much impossible to like skip states and like figure out which shows are allowed, oh. which shows are not allowed. So right. I think most of the tours, people are just rescheduling them. So I don't know. We were really bummed because we were For so sure. looking forward to For coming sure. to Canada. It, was, it would be our first time in Canada. And, um, you know, but we're just kind of, trying to make the best of things right now. <laughs> well, for sure, we're gonna do uh, another interview once you guys are in town, in person, for sure. Okay. We'll be at the show for sure. Yeah. And um, did you have a question? I'll have one conclusive question for you. So long-term, what are your goals for the future? What are you looking to get out of this? And yeah, I'm sure our viewers would like to know. Yeah. Um you know we want to keep building our world and uh, keep releasing albums and uh, i think over the last two years is really when the band started to uh become more prominent and uh, like doing the bigger tours and like the last album you know was most successful for us so i think we really found the path we want to be on and uh, you know we want to create um a really epic stage show and kind of you know, it's always for us always been to create music that it can inspire and empower people and kind of draw them in to our world and have you know create a world for them that they can you know that people can escape to right. <laughs> in a way and yeah. draw inspiration from and uh, i i love how music connects everyone because like we are a very social band and we love uh, you know, meeting people around the world and kind of growing the community. So I think, you know, our goal is to just continue to do that on bigger and bigger scale and, uh, you know, maybe play a show on Mars one day. <laughs> Actually, uh, you, uh, that seems to be a big theme in your music, right? The, the universe and the space and galaxy. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, the new album, the theme is, I guess it's kind of a continuation, evolution of universe, but it's more about, like, the future of humanity and, uh, like, the idea that maybe for human race to survive, we will have to merge with artificial intelligence because if it becomes prominent, then they might, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the hum humanity may become extinct. So is it that merge will will the merge have to happen and you know because if you think about it a lot of research has been done on like a, the idea of uploading your consciousness to a computer yeah. so a lot of the songs is kind of 
exploring whether it's going to be you <laughs> or it's just going to be the robot version of you, whether the soul can live through like some digital code. So it's just kind of like new themes, uh, but... So I'm thinking that you, you watch the movie Upload on Prime. The show. The show. Everybody's been telling me about that one, about Black yeah. Mirror, about like all these crazy ideas. I think a lot of people are exploring these themes now. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, but... it's exactly as you're describing. Yeah. It's uploading their, their consciousness into the afterlife and that becomes their afterlife. Oh, that's crazy because the last time I recorded is the idea that the afterlife is like the digital paradise. Yes. And of course, there's uh, bugs and glitches. It's not perfect. Yeah. It shows that even that there's no perfection in it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Well, uh, well I think that pretty much says it. So, yeah. Wow. You're, you're very efficient in your answers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you answered everything like on the dot. Is there anything you'd like to share uh, with our viewers? Anything uh, at all? Well, I just want to like thank you guys and thank the viewers. Um, I think it's very cool that you know um, we get to do this and we get to meet people like you. Uh, so it's a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's awesome how music kind of brings us together. So I just want to thank you guys and. Uh, yeah, just keep posted uh, for everyone to keep posted on our music, hopefully, and, you know, follow us on Spotify. And we have a secret language that we um, create our merch with. So Ooh. that's always interesting because <laughs> we have a cipher and we write secret messages and people decide, you know, can decide. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, so the cipher is found inside the album. Well, uh, there'll be a link to your uh, video universe on this video as well. So people cool. can have a chance to check it out. And for sure, we'll keep everybody up to date about the, the new sh uh, dates yeah. that will be coming up. And we will be there for sure over Thank there. You. And uh, we, we look forward to meeting you and the boys and uh, having a little chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will be really fun. Yeah, cool. I'll get all my cousins. <laughs> like oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we'll be there with our, uh, with our camera and everything. And we'll, you know, we'll ask even your cousins a few questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Margarita. All the best. Good luck to you and all your future projects. And uh, say hi to the boys from us. And for sure, we look very forward to meeting you soon. Yeah. You guys, thank you so much. And have a great one. Stay safe over there. And we'll see you soon. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.